Hey there, welcome to our Sky Tonight program. My name is Seth Mayo. I'm the curator of astronomy for the Loma Planetarium at MOAS. And glad to have you back as we cover the dates of November 15th through November 21st. We're going to start things off by talking about the annual Leonid meteor shower that peaks this week. We're going to follow it up with a mention of the full moon and then end with a discussion of the partial lunar eclipse that's going on as well. So let's get to it. If you happen to be up in the pre-dawn hours of Wednesday, November 17th, and you have a clear sky, you're looking to the east, or at least all around the sky, you may catch a glimpse of a stray Leonid meteor or two. And the Leonids are a meteor shower that always occurs this time of year around November 17th and 18th. The Leonids are named after Leo the Lion, which we can see here in the east. This is about 4 o'clock in the morning, November 17th. But if you don't see it already, here we have it. You can find that signature hook shape of the head of Leo right here, also known as the sickle. Here's the body of the lion, and there is the tail. Of course, we know Leo is one of the signs of the zodiac and a wonderful spring constellation that you now see prominently in our morning sky. So we'll click on the brightest star in Leo to highlight this constellation of stars Regulus. We'll turn on the outline. There's the hook shape of the head and the rest of the picture as well that you can see there in Stellarium. So the radiant point for the Leonids actually occurs right inside the main or the head of Leo, right about there. So if we turn on our meteor shower radiant points here, there we have the Leonids marked right about there. Now this meteor shower is not one of the most active or busiest meteor showers of the year. If conditions are right, you can see about 10 to 15 per hour, so it's not a lot, but it's still a meteor shower that is famous and has some interesting history. The Leonids actually comes from a comet called 55P Temple Tuttle. The P in the 55P means it's a short period comet, so it has a less than 200 year orbit. In the case of this particular comet, it takes about 33 years to go around the sun once. And every so often, our planet plows through the debris trail of Temple Tuttle at this time of the year, and that's what gives us these meteors. And like I said, the Leonids have an interesting history because this meteor shower has been associated with what are called meteor storms, as we mentioned in a couple episodes ago. And a meteor storm is when you can have thousands of meteors per hour. It's a pretty amazing sight if you get to catch one in your lifetime. You see tons of them in a given hour, even sometimes in just a few minutes you can see a whole bunch. But it doesn't happen all the time with the Leonids about every 33 years. It coincides with its orbit as it goes around the sun. The sun heats up the comet that creates the Leonids and fresh new material gets ejected into its trail. And so that's why about every 33 years, a meteor storm can occur. But it's not perfectly every 33 years, it just depends. If you go back a little bit to 1833, that was a very famous time when the Leonids had a huge outburst of thousands of meteors per hour. And there's a lot of etchings and drawings and artist depictions of this beautiful stream of meteors raining down from the sky. In 1966, we had another fairly decent meteor storm from the Leonids. And more recently, in 2001, it was pretty decent as well. So it's not expected for there to be a meteor storm this year in 2021. The next time it could happen is in the early 2030s. But again, it's not guaranteed because Temple Tuttle might not produce a fresh stream every single time it goes around the sun. And there's many other variables to consider. So it makes it an interesting meteor shower in history, but still one to look out for. The other challenging bit about the Leonids, at least for this year, is that the waxing gibbous moon is out as well. So if you're out in the early morning, you look on the other side of the sky towards the west, and there you see the moon being pretty large. And as we've talked about before, any extra light, especially from the reflected light from the moon, can interfere with these very faint meteors that are shooting across the sky. So that makes this potential sighting a lot more challenging. But again, as I always say, it's worth maybe getting out there or if you get up early enough, just to look out for a minute or two or maybe more if you're really dedicated to this. And you might catch a stray meteor even with the moon out because sometimes you get what are called fireballs, these bright meteors that really shine in the sky. So you can catch those as well. But either way, Leonids are peaking the morning of November 17th. And hopefully you'll get a chance to maybe catch a stray Leonid or two. On the evening of Thursday, November 18th, or the morning of Friday, November 19th, we have the full moon for this month. 
And for this time of year, the full moon is commonly known as the beaver moon. It's a fun name. And the idea behind this name is that at this time of year, beavers in certain parts of the world are going into their lodges they've been building through the summer and fall to prepare for the winter time. And so since that was happening, beavers got their name on the full moon at this time of the year. Of course, there's other names for the moon as well, but that one really stands out and I like it. On a personal note, I actually grew up in a town called Beaverton, Oregon when I was younger. So beavers is something I know fairly well. But anyway, it's a name I always remember for the full moon at this time of the year. So the full moon really kind of begins in the 18th, but really it happens on the morning of the 19th, the exact time of the full moon. But with this full moon, something really interesting is happening. So let's fast forward to the early morning to check out what's going on. What is exciting is the November full moon this year coincides with something called a partial lunar eclipse. And this is also something called a syzygy when the earth moon and sun line up in a straight line and when they do if things line up really nicely you can get an eclipse either a solar or lunar eclipse and in this case we have the sun then the earth then the moon so the moon is passing into earth's shadow this is not a total lunar eclipse so the moon's not going completely into earth's shadow but almost entirely so so technically it is still a partial eclipse but very close to a total one. And keep in mind, a lunar eclipse can only happen during a full moon. Opposite of that, a solar eclipse can only happen during a new moon. So this makes sense. Our full moon this month coincides with this partial lunar eclipse. Right here in Stellarium, I have the local time set to right as the moon enters into Earth's umbra, the main part of the shadow. And local time that happens here, you can look at the top right at 2.18 a.m. and 41 seconds Eastern Standard Time. So that is quite early for us on the East Coast of the United States, but as you move farther west, this happens at an earlier time. So you do have to adjust for your local time zone. So before we show this here in Stellarium, let's take a look at the NASA eclipse diagram for this particular event. So looking at the NASA eclipse chart here, this tells us we're looking at the partial lunar eclipse of November 19th of 2021 here at the top. Here is the diagram for the different contact points for where the moon is entering Earth's shadow and what particular times here. So there's the moon there. P1 is kind of the very beginning of this when the moon enters what's called the Earth's penumbra. That's the secondary, not as dark shadow. And then as we get to U1 here, U1 is what tells us when the moon falls into Earth's umbra, the darkest part of the shadow that we find right there and down here it tells us this happens at 718 universal time for us here on the east coast of the united states that is 218 eastern standard time when that exactly occurs and over the next hour and a half or so the moon will be plunging into earth's shadow here and eventually reaching what's called greatest eclipse at 904 universal time and for us here in daytona this happens at 404 so still very very early but of course you can't schedule these at convenient times and then the moon will continue to move through that shadow of course turning red during that portion there and then eventually leaving the shadow at here at u4 that's ending at 1047 universal time and for us here in florida that's at 547 so pretty near when the moon is setting for us the moon will be very low by then but the moon will be high enough during maximum eclipse, which is nice. And down at the bottom here, this map shows us where this eclipse can be viewed. So here in Africa and even parts of Europe and even in some parts of Asia as well, that's not visible there. But as you move to this area, you can see where it says eclipse at moonset or all eclipse visible. So South America gets some of it there at moonset. Then here, the United States and the rest of North America there, we have a pretty decent view of it. Here in the East Coast, especially in Florida where we are, we get pretty much all of it with the moon getting really low at the very end of it, but that's okay. As you move farther west, then you have an even better view because you can see the entire eclipse from beginning to end while the moon is still fairly high in the sky there. And then of course, most of the Pacific Ocean there, there's a little Hawaii. And you move on the other side of the map here, even parts of Australia here and the eastern side of Asia as well can see it during moon rise instead of moon set. So this map can kind of help us out. So for at least us North American dwellers, we have a decent view of this, which is quite nice. So back in Stellarium, we can play this through, which is a really nice feature in this. So I, again, have it set to 218 local time, 
during the first part of when the moon enters Earth's umbra. So we can watch the moon there. We'll go just a little bit closer here to see that a little bit better. Keep the date and time activated. And we'll just kind of move ahead in time. And as we do, you can see some of the Earth's shadow covering it up. There you can see the curvature of Earth's shadow. They're reminding us that Earth is round. And as we continue watching this, we'll actually click on the moon, really dive into it. And oh yes, the moon is sitting inside of Taurus the bull during this time, so keep that in mind as well. You can see that kind of popped up as I clicked on that. We can zoom into this here and continue this eclipse, moving more and more into the greatest eclipse, which happens again at four in the morning, just a little bit after. There you see the blood moon color that's iconic for these type of things. And that of course is from the refraction from the sun. As the atmosphere refracts the light from the sun, it turns Earth's shadow slightly red. And so it gives it that reddish color. So it doesn't completely disappear, but it gets really, really dark and red, which is a really cool sight to see, especially when you understand what's happening. But you notice there's a little sliver of the moon right there. So you still have a little bit of it in view and not covered by Earth's shadow. There is maximum eclipse. And as we move past this, we can actually see this eclipse continue on as it's leaving the surface of the moon, getting into at least near moon set for us here in Florida as we get into the kind of 5 a.m., really 6 a.m. time frame. So there we have this beautiful event happening when the Earth, Moon, Sun line up in the Syzygy. Not a full lunar eclipse, but a partial one that's still really great happening in the early morning of November 19th, coinciding with our full beaver moon this year. Well, that's it for another edition of our Sky Tonight program. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, please stop by the Museum of Arts and Sciences and definitely our Loman Planetarium. We're running shows every day, and you can check our schedule online for any information about our programs. So with that, I'll say happy lunar eclipse viewing, and of course, happy stargazing.